Okay. Good. So if we're playing the game of football, we're heading into the end of the first half of the year, which means we're heading into halftime. How are we doing? Are we ahead? Are we behind? Uh, are we having the best year we've ever had? Are we getting our butts kicked? Um, do we kind of just wish we could call this one a game and start over again? Uh, anybody hoping that 2021 would hurry up and get here because holy cow, I've had it. I'm sorry for moving around so much, guys. And I, you know, I've had enough of 2020. Talk to me. Tell me how you're doing. We're excited because we're starting something new and we're really excited about that. And we have the tools and it goes back to when you look at how you're going to be successful, there's three pieces to it. There's people, processes, and technology. And so repeat that, repeat that, because I know everybody's going to want to write that down, Kevin. The three things to be successful in anything that you're doing. It's a basically, it's a, it's a triangle of people, processes, and technology. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, okay? It's just, the, the triangle is going to be different shapes. It could be like this, it could be like this, it could be flattened out. But those are the three, the three cornerstones uh, of success in any, anything you're doing, because if you don't have the people, the technology and the processes don't matter. And consequently, if you don't have the process, the people and the technology don't matter and so on and so forth. So we're, we're excited and energized because we, we have the people. We always believed in ourselves. Um, we had, the tech, we had the pro, some of the processes in place because we knew what we were doing. But now we have the technology that command brings us. And we also have our people skills augmented by folks like John and folks like Justin and everybody else that we reach out to to get to get feedback on and to get assistance with and and I should have jumped in sooner but my I, I I can't say enough about Scott Leroy marketing either I mean those guys are fantastic so Love it. bringing bring, being able to bring those three components into a more equilateral triangle I, I'm, I'm I know it's going to lead I know it's going to result in success for us I agree a thousand percent. Super proud of you. And, and what Kevin's talking about, guys, hello. <laughs> Are you surprised I had this sitting right here? Um, working from home this morning, I think you guys probably know that. Um, we'll be going into the office after this call. And of course, I've got this book sitting at home and one at the office too, because I never know where I'm gonna be. And Kevin shared systems, models, and tools is what he's talking about. And Gary shares leads, listings, leverage. What's another word for leverage? People. What's, an, what's another word for model? Systems. Yeah. It's exactly what he's sharing, right? And I'm going to, uh, immediately I thought of page 124, Kevin, when Gary talks about hobo shacks or houses. So I just want to read a little bit of this to you. And here's what Gary has to say. I believe that until you have implemented and worked with a model, you have little business trying to change or improve it. Now it is time to give the model your full faith and effort. Strangely enough, against all advice to the contrary, most agents begin by implementing their own ideas and models. If you looked at it like Kevin was talking about at the bottom of that triangle would be a foundation. If you turn the triangle upside down, it's not stable. It's going to fall. And what you're doing by turning that triangle upside down is you're beginning with creativity. Creativity is at the top of the triangle. At the bottom is models and that's the base. And I'm happy, I'm so happy for you. And I, and I agree, Kevin, you guys are on your way. Keep going, buddy. So talk to me, guys. How are you doing? So I, I'm calling do-over. I'm okay. starting. I'm, I am, I'm reading the seven decisions. I've rewritten my goals, and I'm back in the game. Love it. I was benched. I, I stayed benched for a little bit, but uh, do-over. So I'm back in. Yeah. So in do-overs, don't have to wait until the end of the year. So yeah. having played the game of football, I've been in the locker room enough times when we were just getting our butts kicked. And the coach 
would coach us to go out to the second half and win the second half. It's okay if you don't win the game, just win the second half. Now, what can happen is you actually end up winning the game by winning the second half. I've actually started a new year this year. Um, my cap is June 1st, so it's like day one all over again. There you go. So yeah. it's a new year anyways for me. It is. Your fiscal year runs June through May, so uh, that's exciting. Happy yeah. anniversary. Yes. Four years. There you go, baby. Love it. And I remember day one, Michael. Yeah. You know, isn't a, a win contagious? Is winning contagious? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, you feel like you want to win it again because now you can do it. Yes. You're creating momentum, Eddie. And momentum is powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the other uh, thing about momentum is it takes less effort to succeed when you've created momentum than it does when you are stopped, right? Yeah, Alex. So John, as you know, last year was horrendous for me. It, it sucked. And writing out my goals for this year and what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve, um, I thought was pretty good. And unfortunately or fortunately, we ran into the coronavirus and I was blessed enough to be smart enough to get online and start listening to you uh, with these morning coaching calls. And by listening to you, I picked up certain bits and pieces, and that's where my business is starting to go ahead and grow and improve. So at this particular point, I'm like really excited and stoked about my business and this year. The year itself, you know, everybody's asking about it would be nice to go ahead and get to 2021 or reset 2020. This just seemed like such a bad infomercial. But wait, there's more. And, you know, it is what it is, but it, it's great that, you know, we are still focused on being able to go ahead and grow our business. And I think that's the right mindset. Yeah. And what are we potentially losing by wishing time away? For those of you who have children, everything yeah. that happens between now and the end of the year, if you truly could, start over and it's January 1, 2021, you've just missed everything that happens between now and the end of the year. Do you really want to do that? No. This is all right, all so let, let, go ahead, Alex, go. I was just gonna say, what we're going through right now is just a learning environment. We're learning things and we're experiencing things that we'll be able to use in our life. Yeah, I'm grateful to be on this journey. It doesn't mean it's an easy journey. And I'm grateful to be on this journey. Can I awesome. add something? Please, Elsa, of course. Um, I don't know for the others, but for me, um, even though it's difficult to have everything changed because mindset change, we have family inside the house, we have to reevaluate the schedule, how we work, whatever. I think that I have learned so much the last I would say two or three months that it's, it's just blowing my mind what I'm able to do now because I took the time to set the tone, to work on command, to, you know, and all of this, I, I think that it's, it's invaluable. It's very, it's, it was an opportunity to slow down. Yeah. Love that. And Elsa, you and I have been working together now for five years. Yes and I know you well, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you that I've seen you grow more in the last six months than in the four and a half years prior to that. Yeah, I agree. And that's a good thing. Yeah, no pressure, yeah. No, di no diamond. I agree Pr with you more. Proud of you, proud of you. So guys, I'm not, I'm not looking away from you. I'm pulling up my iPad so I can share my screen. Who's next? Uh, can I add something? Please do, Christian. I, I would like to piggyback on Alex and Alza. 
for this last uh, two months, attending your morning meetings is a total game changer. And uh, I'm back to prospecting and using the methods that I've learned and picked up and making notes on this morning calls. And, uh, and then, you know, little bumps in the road, but uh, I believe I'm in, in a, a good way. Love it. You are in a good way. You absolutely are. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna talk about being on a journey, which we are. And I'm gonna share my vision. When we are in a journey, We have a goal and let's just say that this is today. Cool. So to be on a journey with a destination that is assured means to know that I'm going to reach my goal. It's not a question of, I hope I do. I'm going to work really hard. And if I fall short, I fall short. It's no, I'm 100% sure that I'm on a journey with a destination that is assured. Now to be on a journey with a destination is, that is assured doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. And that, as a matter of fact, it's going to be really, really difficult. And along the ways, you're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to have opportunities to detour. There's going to be temptation to U-turn. You've got this thing going on called E to P, and in E to P, we know that we hit the ceiling of achievements until we become purposeful and break through those ceilings. So along this journey, we're going to hit the ceiling many, 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 many times. And as long as we are persistent, then we will reach our destination. There is only one way that we will not reach our destination. And that is if we give up. Now you're gonna be tempted to give up. Matter of fact, you're going to be tempted often to give up. But if you would just change the way you look at things, bolt wall, change the, thing, change the way you look at things, things you look at change, and if you were to look at this journey from a thousand miles in the air, in other words, if you could get outside time and look at time the way God sees time, the same yesterday, today, and forever, alpha and omega, the beginning and then, omnipresent, omnipotent, everywhere, all the time, then there is no such thing as time, which means you've already arrived at your destination. It's already happened. Now, if you can look at your journey that way, then there is nothing that can happen along this journey that will cause you to give up. COVID won't stop you. Health crisis, economic crisis, what's going on in our world right now today, none of these things will stop you. To be on a journey with a destination that is assured is to know that you have already reached the destination and that there is absolutely nothing that can stop you. Now, if you worked every day with a mindset that I'm going to reach my goal, what would you do different? What would your day look like? What if you looked at this instead of, a, at, instead of a journey that you're taking over the next 12 months? What if you looked at this in a 24 hour time period? And you said, I'm on a journey with a destination that is assured. My destination today is 20 contacts, two appointments booked, 
one person added to my database. And then you woke up tomorrow and you did it again. I'm on a journey with a destination that is assured and my destination is 20 contacts, two appointments booked, one person added to my database. And then you woke up the next day and said, okay, I'm on a journey with a destination that is assured. And my destination is 20 contacts, two appointments booked, one person added to my database. Now, you did that 250 days over the next 12 months. What would the end of the year look like? Do the math. 250 days, that's working 50 weeks, five days a week, with two appointments. That's being face-to-face -face with two people a day who are going to buy a home or going to sell a home. Remember, notice I didn't say they're looking to buy or sell a home today. I don't care if they're buying or selling today. You are face-to-face -face with 500 people by the end of the year, which means you are creating emotional proximity by following up forever with 500 people. 5,000 or 500? 250 times two is 500. Oh, okay. 500. You're face to face with 500 people, Christian, who could eventually hire you. Now, remember the key words here, guys, because words matter. The, the key word in that sentence, excuse me, is eventually. I don't care if they're going to hire me tomorrow, 30 days from now, six months from now, or a year from now. It makes no difference. I'm looking for opportunity to provide a better experience to those who work with me. Right? That, and by the way, that's an affirmation. You need to change the way you look at things. Change the way you look at things, things you look at change. I am looking for two people today in order to be able to provide a better experience for those who choose to work with me. And I will not stop until I talk to two people who can eventually hire me. Now, what would, your, what would your business, what would your real estate business look like if you worked every day like that? Phenomenal. Reasons are results. You're gonna find reasons not to do it. You're gonna find reasons not to do it. And you can either focus on the reasons and what are you gonna get when you focus on the reasons? Not Say more reasons. Mm -hmm. Because what you focus on expands. Yeah. Or you can focus on the results. Eddie, I cut you off, my friend. No, it's okay. No problem. What were you going to say? Talk to me. I was going to say all this leads to results. Everything leads to results. Yeah, it does. So if you just go and view a home, right? They're clearly saying that I'm not going to sign an agreement, but I'm persistent that I will, you know, come over, just review the home. Am I going there as prepared for a listing presentation? Like I'm bringing everything with me, a CMA and... I don't know if you can see me shaking my head. I can see. But the answer is no, 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 no. Remember the three things that, and, and I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't, I'm not scolding you. I'm just telling you the answer is no. Right? Okay. I don't know if you, I don't hear the word scolding very being used very much. I think it's probably anybody over 40 gets it. <laughs> so, or anybody with kids gets it, I guess. Here's the thing, Christian. If I called you up your circle prospecting call and I said, hey, Christian, you know, the reason I'm calling you today is because we recently sold a home in your neighborhood. Script. And there are buyers who are interested in great homes like yours. And I was just curious. Who do you know in your neighborhood who might be thinking of selling? And you said, you know, maybe me, but not at least for another year. You tracking with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. Then I would say, that's awesome. That's exactly why we should get together, Christian. I'd love to pop by and just take a look at your home so that I know a little bit about your home and what, you, what, your, um, what your goals are so that maybe one day, I can earn the opportunity to be your agent. Would it be okay if I pop by for just 15 minutes to take a look at your house? Now, is everybody gonna say yes to that? Say no. no. If I talk to enough people today, can I find two people who would say yes to that? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna come see your home. 
The only thing I'm bringing is a notebook, a pen, and a business card. Because okay. you're asking yourself, do you care about me? Can I trust you? If I show up prepared to list your home, I don't care about you. You can't trust me. Right? Right. Now, I'm going to enter you into my database. Mm -hmm. And I am going to create a systematic plan to follow up with you forever. The only thing that will make me stop calling you is if you hire somebody else, I'll stop calling. If you sell your home, I'll stop calling. And that's it. Right. Other than that, I'm calling. What about expired? Same thing. So Christian, I noticed your home came off the market and I was just curious if I had a full price offer today, would you want me to bring you the offer? Yes. Cool. That's exactly why we should get together. It'll only take me 10 or 15 minutes to pop by so that I could potentially bring you an offer. Does four o'clock today work or would five be better for you? Four. Yeah. Now, Christian could say, I'm never going to hire you. Christian yeah. could say, if I relist my home, I'm hiring Elsa. Christian could say, I'm only paying 2%. He could also say, I want $500,000 for my home and I know it's not worth more than 400. And my response to all of those is cool. See you at four o'clock. Okay. Same thing. Notepad, business card. You got it. That's it. That's it. I've got a pipeline that I'm filling with opportunity and I have a job. My job is a destination. It's right. assured because there's nothing that will make me stop nothing. And because I'm on a journey with a destination that is assured today, I am going to be face to face with two people who could eventually hire me. And because I follow up with them forever, I've got 500 people that I'm following up with in order to create emotional proximity. Now, what if my conversion ratio is only 10%? What if 90% tell me to take a hike? Well, cool. I just sold 25 houses. I am really good with that. Okay. So I mostly focus on expires. Love so, it. Uh, right. And I can see from the property history that some of them are motivated than others. And I'm using the script that potentially bring you an offer, which translates to most of them that they thinking there is an offer. So they are texting and calling back and, you know, bring you, bring me the cash offer. Where's the offer, right? So the response to that is, sure, Christian, I would love to bring you an offer. Unfortunately, I don't have the right buyer. You don't want me to just bring you anyone. You want me to bring you the right buyer, correct? Right. Right. And you see, the reason I don't have the right buyer is because no one is calling me about your house. Now I'm pausing because I want to give the seller an opportunity to say, what do you mean no one's calling you about my house? However, if he doesn't, I'm going to say, can I explain? Of course. Yeah. You see, Christian, no one's calling me about your home because I'm not marketing your house. I'm selling houses. Matter of fact, I'm selling a lot of houses. I sold four homes last month. I sold 10 homes in the last 30 days. I just haven't sold your house because no one's calling me about your home. Okay. Well, Christian, where do you think this conversation is going to go? Where could it go? Price reduction. Price. No, no, this is an expired listing. A listing appointment. It could go, well, what would you do to market my house? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> now, what do I have? Listing Say a appointment. listing appointment. Listing Say a listing appointment. Yes, listing yes, appointment. yes, yes. So Talk. then you go back again? Yes. Now it's a listing appointment. So if, if you were to say, so what would you do to market my home? My response would be, that's a great question. It's exactly why we should get together. I could come over tomorrow at four o'clock and share with you what I could do to get your home sold in the next 30 days for the most amount of money. 
Does four o'clock work or would five be better for you? Okay. Now I have a listing appointment, Christian. You get that? Now, integrity yes. matters because I don't want you guys to think I'm using manipulation because I'm not. There's no tricks here. There's nothing. I, I'm not hiding anything in my sleeve. <laughs> right. um, if I had a buyer for Christian's home, would I bring him the buyer? Say yes. And yes. If I could sell Christian's house with, without listing it, would I say yes? yes? I would actually make more money. I would rather bring him a buyer than list his house. And by the way, Christian, tell him that. Tell him. It, you know, sure. I'm, I'm really not interested in listing your home. I want to help you sell it. Matter of fact, I make more money if you don't list with me. Wow. Because I'm not going to market your property. I don't have to spend any time managing the listing. I don't have any overhead, Alex. Oh, yeah. I get to keep 100% of that commission. 3%. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would like to add for the agent who are new and who might be intimidated with uh, what you say about how many houses you have sold the last week or month or whatever. That's the beauty of being part of Keller Williams. And you can take the number of our office and say yeah. at the office. Yeah. Thank you, Elsa. And, and you do that, guys, simply by exchanging the word I to we. You know, we have sold blank number of homes in the last 30 days in an average of 30 less than 30 days on the market for an average of 98 percent of the asking price it's exactly why we should get together awesome you guys good yes no? everybody good everybody know what your job is today yes yep are you super crystal clear on that two oh, yes today. are you on a journey with a destination that is assured Yes. yes. Are you going to be tempted to stop? Say yes. Are you going to yes. be tempted to make a U-turn? Say yes. 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 Is this thing going to get super heavy and weigh about a thousand pounds at some point? Say yes. Are yes. people yes. going to be mean and nasty to you? Yes. yes. Are people going to tell you never to call them again? Yes. 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 <laughs> Your response to that is, sure, I understand, and I'll call you next week. Next week. And <laughs> you guys think I'm joking. I'm not joking. There is nothing you could do that would cause me to stop calling. Nothing. Unless Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Guys got that? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. All right. Thank you, John. All right, everybody. Make it a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.